I really want to use this other mic. This sexy ass white mic. This is dope. Anyways. Use, all right. Use sports part three. If you have not part listened three. to parts. Yeah. I feel like it's part 17 because we've recorded each of them twice now. But if you've not listened to parts one and two, go back and listen to that because a lot of what we talk about here is going to be from those two episodes. And we're not trying to repeat ourselves either. So when um, we'll just get right into it. But a lot of this is about youth sports, specifically travel youth sports, and just kind of the demanding ins and outs of that yeah. world. Uh, in part one, you don't, two, if you don't know what travel sports of, are, you got your rec sports, your your club ball, like like you got your park district stuff, and then a level up would be like club club ball, where you know typically it's more expensive and it's higher competition. And then the travel is the you know you're you're good enough and paying enough to where you don't necessarily have a home field or a home court per se, but rather, I mean, you're doing nothing but tournaments and you're traveling most often more times than not, you're traveling to other States even uh, to do these tournaments. So. Yeah. And so to, I mean, with that comes a lot and what we've talked about a lot in the first two episodes are making sure that number one, you understand that when you sign up for something like this, you're going to be spending a lot of money and that's just kind of the nature of the beast. Um, and making sure that your kid actually wants something like this because it is a big commitment. And as parents, it's easy to say like, well, I played this and I want my kid to follow in my footsteps right. or right. to make those types right. of decisions for your kids. And this is not one of those decisions that you can make for your kids or it's going to be miserable for both of you. Uh, we talked a little bit about having hard conversations with your kids because kids are going to go back and repeat everything you say. So if you're talking about other kids on the team, if you're talking about coaches, if you're talking about the program in general, I can guarantee you they're going to go back and everybody around them is going to hear what you've been saying at home. Yeah. Um, that, Mark, Coach Mark P. Pasqualini that we had as our guest for, the, for uh, episode two, you know, one of the, I think one of the most important things he, he talked about with in, in terms of um, the things you say around the kids and why to do, the, why to do travel is, is the discipline. Uh, you know, aspect. And, and, and I used to joke with him all the time about like, it's not my job to discipline your punk ass kid. <laughs> but that's not what he, that's not what he meant. What he, what he meant was uh, it's learning how to manage your time, having mm -hmm. discipline behind uh, getting your homework done when it's supposed to get done, uh, learning how to take um, direction from somebody other than a parent or teacher mm -hmm. all the way to discipline in the kitchen and your homework, uh, your workouts, your training, the things that you, you know, the things that you can do to, to get better at your position and at, and at your craft. So, you know, if you're considering getting your, and, and this is primarily in terms of an audience meant to go towards, uh, you know, the parents, I suppose. Mm -hmm. And if you're considering putting your kids in a travel sport, understand you're looking at a ton of money and a, and a ton of hours and a ton of volunteer hours and, and not to mention a ton of money <laughs> and, the, and the fundraising for yet it more tons stops. of money. It um, never stops. You know, but the trade-off, yes, it, it can be, it can be huge because the better, the better you give, the better competition that you put your kids around, mm -hmm. you know, the better they should get all yes. things being equal. Yes. And that goes into one of the first points here. Listen, when you are looking, not all programs are the same. I know at least for hockey, mm -hmm. that's the one that we deal with the most in my house. But my husband chose a very specific program from the time we, our kid got on the ice mm -hmm. because he knew that that rink has that specific program with those specific accreditations that stay in this specific realm. And I don't know what he tries to explain it to me. I don't understand all the ins and outs. There's like divisions on top of divisions within divisions. Um, but know that and do your research before you, mm -hmm. before you sign up with a program. Um, because that's going to be important. The types of competition that you find right. and, and the level of play is going to be different, you know, place to place. And no, the money um, you spend does not correlate to playing time. No, nobody it gives a shit. <laughs> that's no, just the right to wear the Jersey. <laughs> yes, absolutely. That that money that you spend doesn't really give you a right to anything but the jersey. You don't get any extra information ahead of time. <laughs> you don't get any special treatment if you're, you know, it's 
everybody is paying the money and everybody gets a jersey and that's about it. Like yeah. from there, it's on to you. And I know we talked a lot, a lot about the politics of this in our first episode. And then we talked to Mark about it too, because we kind of asked him how, how coaches navigate that. But when it comes to parents, like how do you navigate that from a parent? I haven't been in this long enough to really speak on this, I don't think. But when you're looking at things like tryouts and the social time that comes with travel, right? All these parents are spending all this time together in hotels and this and that. Um, and and just general involvement, like how do you navigate those politics to stay on the right side of it? Like what would you tell these parents about that? I think that, you know, it's important to understand. From what I understand, first of all, let me be clear. I can, you know, I have intimate experience of, of travel softball. And I hear good, you know, fairy tales and horror stories of, of travel volleyball and football. I can only assume baseball. Well, baseball is exactly the same as, as softball. Mm-hmm. I know that for sure. So, you know, for all, all intents and purposes, when there's a certain subculture that happens when, when, you're, when you join a, a travel team, okay? And it's not, if you, can, if you look at it, it's not, it's not that different than high school which is not that different than, than college small group. It's not that different than your first job where, you know, you're the rookie and da da da. Like it's basically the same shit because nobody ever mm-hmm. fucking grows up. I mean, I'm just, just going to be dead ass. Okay. Now mm-hmm. let's take, for example, uh, the hotels. Okay. We, you know, you'll travel to these hotels out of state, you know, and our team always, almost always had a, you know, uh, an adult get together in the lobby you know, and that was like fun time to have adult beverages and, you know, have fun and, you know, sometimes talk shit and, and just do talk about adult things. And sometimes the kids were down there and, you know, they did their thing. And, you know, while we did our thing and, 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 uh, you know, as you, as they got older, the less time they spent, but they spent more time walking around with their phones than, than anything else. But, <laughs> you know, for the adults, if, if you look at it as the same, from the same standpoint of, okay, I'm new here. What do I what am I going to encounter? Then you're going to encounter, there's always going to be that parent or two that is trying to get an edge with the coach. There's, there's a parent or two that is, you know, they're the gossipers. There's a parent or two that thinks their kid's a fucking all-star. Um, there's a parent or two that's just there to enjoy the process. It's kind of, you know, it's fun for them. There's a parent or two that's got nothing but money and doesn't care either way. And then there's a parent or two that's always got, you know, some sort of, uh, uh, networking angle where they're, they're you know that's kind of a meet and greet for them and they just kind of want to be in the know not necessarily yeah. talk shit or do whatever but it's just you know it's it's a sub it's a subculture it's like a, a you know a, a, what's it called a, a pta kind of yeah. deal you know what i mean the neighborhood yeah. watch everybody kind of uh-huh. you know what i'm saying and it yeah. carries on that way because that becomes like oh remember when we first met and we hung out and we did that and it's it, you know it gives the group something to talk about other than the sport going on because a lot of times parents, you know, uh, uh, mom and dad alike in unison are not on the same level of knowledge of the sport, family per family per family. So there's not like the stands are filled with the players as parents and everybody's an expert, except of course, (laughs) everybody's an expert, you know what I'm saying? And so, There'll be a lot of uh, uh, social issues where there'll be, I don't understand why coach ABC is, is doing that. Why do that? And then everyone's got an opinion. There. So, you, just, you know, you have to stay away from that sort of thing or just know that it's coming to deal with it when it comes, honestly. Um, but I, I think I would tell a parent, you know, know that that's a possibility going in. I'm not going to say, because I don't want to like put, you know, everybody under this. I don't want to stereotype everybody, but. Right. I have yet to hear of a, of an organization or, or a team that hasn't had some kind of, you know, social bitch assness <laughs> occur where people are just like, oh, God, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, get ready to relive high school all over. <laughs> it kind of I was when I was thinking about this episode earlier today, that's kind of what I, I thought to compare it to. You know, I haven't experienced anything like that. We're in the beginning stages of this and everyone's been awesome so far. We've, we haven't traveled anywhere yet. Like we haven't, you know, stayed in hotels anywhere or anything like that yet. Um, but I don't know. It's kind of, it's like nerve wracking a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> and, and again, I don't, it's not, I'm not, I don't want to jump out and say that it's, it's neg- necessarily a negative, mm. bad thing, but 
personally for me, it wasn't my jam. You know what I mean? Right. I, yeah. I, I mean, I, I had my, my experiences when I was doing music and performance. I was in hotels every weekend, all through my 20s and 30s yeah. performing. So, like, I had my share of doing hotels and this and that. So I'm kind of, you know, I was over it. So, so for a lot of folks going to do this is kind of a vacation for them in a way. Yeah. And it's a fun social thing that they can do because it's technically not work. You know, it's not your work friends. It's not, t- mm-hmm. you know, people you grew up with. It's not family. Mm-hmm. It's a new family. It's your team. It's kind of, that's what everybody says. My family, you know what I'm saying? Which is somewhat accurate because everybody hates somebody in their family. And <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's kind of where it goes. I mean, like, like I don't know what you're laughing at. I know you got family members that you hate. I'm like, Me too. We are. I'm probably the guy my own family hates half the time. <laughs> I'm still here. Screaming, Holy. Oh, Anyways, moving on. <laughs> you said pause. Did you said pause? <laughs> No, I said that's great. Oh, okay. I, yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah, it's fantastic. <laughs> so yeah, I, I, overall, just you know, well, everybody I, is fighting for the same spot. Everybody's fighting for playing time. Everybody's paying the same. You know, don't worry about you know the coaches being playing daddy and you know daddy ball and whatnot. Like, like don't. Those are things you have to know are a possibility. I think, but at the end of the day, if your kid is good. They'll get a shot if you get them great so that there can be no there can be no comparison. I mean, I think at the end of the day, it's kind of like just don't be an asshole. Like, Mm -hmm. you know, be social. Don't be like the one that's never around. But Mm -hmm. at the same time, like you don't need to engage in all that gossip stuff that's like makes people not trust. You know, just just don't be a jerk because (laughs) Facebook will always tell the truth. Oh, my gosh. Oh, I saw your post. You know what I mean? So. And if it's not Facebook, it's somebody talking to somebody talking to somebody else and it makes its way around, you know? Right. So just like, yeah. don't be a jerk. So other than, other than um, we live in high school, what else, what else, <laughs> what else are we talking about here? So you, you, what, you just mentioned something about if your kid is good, help them be great or something. Mm. What did you just say? Help them be yeah. great so that there's no comparison. Because if your kid owns yeah. their position, then it's theirs to defend. Somebody else has yep. to come and take it. So one thing we talked about in part two was exactly that about like fostering your kids real like ambition to like get it done and to get better and to make sure that they have everything they need to succeed and and avoiding injury as they can. But we talked a little bit about getting extra training outside of the the club that you're in. So. Mm -hmm. I mean, how do these parents know when outside training is necessary? And then how do you know what to look for in that extra training? I think unless you're in the business, unless you are in the health and, and, and wellness and you are a, you know, a, a trainer or a coach or have experience in that sport, especially, you know, if, at least in, in the sport, if not the position. And you know, you'll know at that point whether your kid is needing extra stuff. But by, I, but to my point, they're probably already getting it, right? I think that mm-hmm. you have to assume that there's always going to be some other kid that it has had some type of extra add-on training. There, you know, what nowadays you could you could fall out of bed and hit ten training centers, and everybody again yeah. knows a different way. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of it is because they base their training styles on the skills of that trainer or that, you know, coaching experience or whatever it is. So, you know, you have to look at how your your kid matches up with their position that they're playing. What is important to that position? If it's if it's, you know, hockey. You know, you got to well for any sport, really, but, you know, well, let me back up. You have to look at how well their arthrokinematic displays work. So in layman's terms, you know, do they have basic balance and symmetry? Can their head, shoulders, knees, and toes work the way that they're supposed to? Do you notice that your kids are, uh, you know, getting hurt frequently? Are they spraining ankles? Are they, you know, uh, um, unconditioned? Are they a mm-hmm. complete slob ass in the kitchen? Like, like if your kid, you know, eats nothing but dick and spit every day, and they don't do have do shit but play video games. But they're really, really Johnny awesome in gym class. Like they're probably going to get owned when it comes time to go up against other kids that are actually putting the work in. Right. You know what I mean? If it's hockey and, and your kid's a figure skater, like, will they be able to have, well, you know, 
the same kind of athletic prowess as a hockey player? Probably not. Mm-mm. Will they be less uh, prone to injury? Yeah, maybe. Simply yeah. because connective tissue, muscle memory, uh, uh, fascial integrity, uh, specifically around the ankles and knees, are probably just better conditioned for that range of motion and those types of movements and patterns, right? So you got to look at, is my kid uh, physically able to do this at a high level, meaning high reps, you know, less, hard to get, hard to get your rest in. Can they keep, keep it up most days of the week Mm -hmm. and go from there? Mm -hmm. And you keep saying positions too, training for your positions. Mm -hmm. I don't think a lot of people realize that, especially if you don't necessarily know the sport that your kid plays, right? Like Mm -hmm. there's a lot of, a lot of people who play hockey whose parents never have played hockey. Right. Right. (laughs) But, and I, it's easy to say, oh, my kid needs to be faster. My kid needs more power. My kid mm-hmm. needs to be able to turn around faster. They need to think quicker on their toes. But it's each position is so different and needs different things. Yep. Just, you know, and, and that goes for any sport, not just hockey. But that those are things that you have to take into account. And if right. you don't know what to look for, ask the coach, right? Like, mm-hmm. it's see what kind of insight the coach can offer you because the coach will be able to tell you very specifically what that kid needs to be able to do for their position. And if they see a place that they're lacking, then maybe that's when you can start to find extra things around that one, that skill that they're lacking. You know, and and in a a rec team, they may have rudimentary drills Mm -hmm. to be able to to determine whether or not you're, you know, a player can even do the basic skills. Right. Can they weave when they're skating? Can they skate backwards with the same type of control and power? You know, mm-hmm. you know are they going to measure you know, shot range? Are they going to measure, you know, how high you bring your stick? Uh, if you're, you know, a softball or baseball player, are they going to measure your 60 right away? Are they going to measure mm-hmm. the exit below for how, when, when you throw across the field or from center field? You know, if you're a football player, are they going to, this is, this is travel like, Younger, your younger age, let's say, you know, 10 to 13, uh, let's say eight to 13 year old. You know, if you're a footballer, are they going to measure how much you bench? Like, probably, yeah. I, I, I don't think so. You know what I mean? What they're going to want to do is at, on travel teams, they're going to look for whether on travel teams are going to look for if you can play your position and can you do it well. On a rec yes. team in the beginnings, they're going to look for do you understand the sport? And yes. there's a lot of times athletes are super athletic, right? Mm-hmm. And Sometimes coaches and parents, you know, can't figure out just what's going on. And I hate to say, it, but sometimes it's as little as uh, uh, their vision. You got yeah. poor eyesight. <laughs> That's a problem. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yes, so, absolutely. I know in hockey, they we before you even go to travel, you learn all those rudimentary things, weaving in and out of cones. You know, before mm-hmm. you even get really to the house league, you're in the learn to skate programs and you do all that leading up. And so they do look for those positioning type things in, in the tryouts, but they also look for hockey sense. Like, do you understand, you know, certain, certain rules within hockey? Do you, you know, like offsides is a really hard one for kids to learn when they first start, but they, they look for those strategy things. Are you passing? Are you, um, are you just trying to be the star and score? Like, do you understand the game or do you, there's a difference yeah. there. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Um, And then, and and so, especially when they're little, they still are getting into all that positioning stuff, but it's really important to pay attention to all the things that go into each position. And the the irony is the younger they are, the less you should push as a parent, the more you Mm -hmm. should push around them enjoying what they're doing. Because if they don't love it, they're not going to want to get better at it. They won't care. Exactly. You know what I mean? They're not going to be able to coach them through or parent them through a loss. They're not going to know, you know, they're going to have way too much pressure on them. Mm-hmm. and not know how to deal with taking an L. And then you start going into things like burnout, yeah. right? Yeah. And yeah. and especially when they're that little, I mean, some of these kids are six years old on this travel team. Yeah. That, that we're, There's no that reason we're for a six-year-old to be burnout. No. And it's easy to do if the kid doesn't like what they're doing because we are skating five or six days a week. So it, if they don't yeah, really it, like If anything, it, like, them kids are going to be burnt out of school. Oh, they're tired. Think about they, that. There's some days. I don't want you to have... get on a tangent about school because I know you got your yeah. you're feeling some type yeah. of way. <laughs> yeah. But no. 
Their and problems can, are different. Yeah. They got a and bunch of big feelings. The, they do. And, you know, there's times where we have a, a five day stretch of hockey where we skate five days in a row. And by the end, that fifth day, it's like they, everything is because they're, they're exhausted. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I you got to remember that they're kids and, yeah. and listen to what they need. I mean, yeah. is it the end of the world if your kid is dead tired one day and can't make it to practice? I mean, I would say no. If my kid is falling asleep on the couch when he gets home from school, am I going to force him to go if he is so exhausted he can't keep his eyes open? I I mean. Yes and no. Yeah. I'll say yes and no. Because because if it was all jump houses and carnivals and shits, them motherfuckers would be, they have, they'd be have energy for days. They would, they would, you know, that's when they would push through and all of a sudden they're good. Right. Mm -hmm. But, you know, just like you can overtrain as an adult, you know, to, it's not, you can do the same thing as, you know, to a kid also, but it right. just hits them different. You know what I'm saying? So I, I don't think it goes back to listen to solidify kids. the parent relationship. Yeah. You know, just nurture that conversations, the parenting, the nurture, the passion behind it. And, you know, and understand that uh, you're, you know, it's going to be expensive. Like it's, it's not, it's not cheap. <laughs> It's not cheap. You know what I mean? And don't don't be that parent and be like, yo, I got two kids. Let me tell you something. Can I get a BOGO here? Like, like no. <laughs> no, it's you not going to work that way. Got to pay for a roster spot, man. You know, that's oh, if you make tryouts and can get on the team. You know what I'm saying? Right. So Yeah, then once you get on the team, you have to earn your way to that playing time like we talked about. But what about the offseason then? Like, if you had to tell parents is for any sport, like – What's the best thing that they can do for their kids in the off season of their sport? Stay active. Stay active. And, and again, if you're, if you're keeping a good eye out for the burnout and they're, they want to do it, mm-hmm. if they want to do it, let them do it. Yeah. Keep on keeping on. If they're not sure, give them a beat. Just, you know, stay. I mean, you can, I'm not saying don't give them time off, but. I don't, I personally am all for multi-sport athletes. Mm-hmm. Um, I have no problems with, I think that that is a fantastic idea uh-huh. simply because if we were to get down to the minutia that make up all of the ranges of motion and athlete in every part of their body goes through at any given time in any given sport and or play, it's all the same. So any kind of funny compound angle or compromising angle you can get in and practice and play through if they want to do it then the better off you are Mm -hmm. for sure yeah i mean we were kind of nervous at the end of the summer because easton played uh, baseball over the summer and he loved it so much Mm -hmm. we were like are you sure you still want to play hockey (laughs) like because he was so into it but i think that's good for him yeah to have to be able to do two different things. He loves them both equally. I mean, when he's in hockey season, he's 400% into that. When it's baseball, he's 400% into that. Yeah. But I, I, and I think overall that, that, that helps him. It keeps him disciplined. Yeah. It keeps him active. And yeah, it's not like he's so sick of one thing that he can't even look at it. Anymore. But he's got to find a, you know, I think that young, you know, parents and kids have to find a balance of, you know, family time and, and the downtime should be really meant to, I think when it gets to a point where the kids are obsessed Mm -hmm. and, and as much as I love to say, and I still say that obsession is necessary for success, Mm -hmm. I can say that as an adult. And I'd love to say that for the kids, as long as they knew the difference, you can give your body a break and then watch, you know, game film or, you know, YouTube videos of your favorite players and study different things or just, you know what I'm saying? And you're still putting yeah. work in. You're working the muscle between the ears. There's nothing wrong with that while giving your body a break. You know, the body is not mm-hmm. indestructible, even if they're That's super right. young and they can take a beating. Don't get me wrong. But, you know, you don't want to get in a position where you're working the same kind of things uh, to a point where they don't ever get a chance to heal. And you just kind of, without knowing, you know, develop scar tissue and whatnot and just set them up for disaster. Right. Okay. I mean, that's all I've got. So do you have anything else that like you think is super important for people to know before they get into, or if they're in the throes of it or, you know, just any type of practical do this, don't do that. I think that understand the kids got a lot of pressure. 
as much as it is a game, people, they take it way, sometimes it's taken out of context and taken way too seriously. And it starts to uh, affect the kids negatively in that they think if they have a bad game or a bad match, that they're a bad kid. Yeah. And that's, you got to be careful and, and watch that because even if you're saying to them, no, no, it's not, that's not, you know, don't, don't ever believe that you're wonderful. You know, you're putting the effort in da, 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 da. like there's, there's could be 10 kids on the team that are talking that shit. They could overhear another parent saying something even to their kid. And they, and it, and it, you just can't control, you never know what's going on, you know, at somebody else's house and the kinds of things that are being uh, said you know, and thrown around, but there's gotta be a balance between it. Like, like being afraid to fail at something is just completely stupid because whether you fail or succeed, you, like, guess what? There's still another rep. You just going to yeah. take the rep after a win or take it after a loss. It doesn't make a difference. You know what I'm saying? Right. There's, mm-hmm. there's, there's always going to be that other step. So, uh, I think making sure that they're, you understand that they've got a lot of pressure, the coaches, for all intents and purposes, also have a lot of pressure, even if they're over here playing favoritism. So if you're concerned that your your team's coach is like that, do your homework and check on it. Yeah. Check on it. When I got uh, Mia started with this team, um, I had a lot of referrals to a lot of different coaches in the area. And um, ultimately, I reached out to, to Mark, and I, I Facebook stalked him and I found him and it happened to be at a tournament. We were both at with her old team and then where he was playing. I want to say it was in Sycamore. I could be wrong, but I, might, I think it was in Sycamore. And he had this long white beard at the time, like a, like a Halloween costume, gray beard, <laughs> like really? to a point type shit. Yeah. Oh my God, so I, I, I went, that. I went walking around. I'm sure you can find it on Facebook. If you put that as a PIP, you'll see this is like this. <laughs> so I'm, I'm walking around and I was just like, Ooh, there you go. And he, he was putting his stuff together before going on to the game. And, and we were at a whole lift, different quad of fields on the other side. And I was like, Hey, are you, are you, are you Mark? And he's like, yeah, I'm like, hi, I'm Chris. And you know, my daughter's going to be moving here and that are just letting you know. And da-da-da. like he was getting ready to play. I just wanted to introduce myself to see um, if, how would he take a complete stranger talking to him? Mm-hmm. How would her, the, the girls around him, the team be, how would the other coaches, if there were any, like, I want I just wanted to see how the interaction would be. Mm-hmm. And the more I talked to him, the more he continued to make sure that the I's were dotted and T's were crossed. When he said he was going to call, he called. He was mm-hmm. never bad about communication. So to me, I felt much better about this whole thing getting into it five or six some odd years ago, whenever it was, you know, and, and, and I started to learn and I'm still a lot for me to learn about, about it all. Um, but, but, I, I knew that he was the right guy for the job um, because I knew he would be able to develop her mm-hmm. as a young woman, student athlete kind of, kind of, kind of perspective. I, I didn't necessarily care about her becoming the, you know, like the scholarship softball player that she is now playing here in Oklahoma. I cared about making sure that she made a good transition from Wakanda to Plainfield, you know, going from living with her mom to living with me, new school, new everything. I wanted to make sure that sports could do for her what it did for me so many times, which was provide, you know, a church. It was my sanctuary. Like I could go there and just do what I do and do what I love and, and feel free and relaxed. So do your homework with your head coach and make sure that you know, you don't have any bad vibes from them and do you, and, and, and ask around about them because they're in that position. Believe me, they know they're being checked on. They have your expectations to deal with and they have their own kids expectations. They have the organization's expectations to deal with. He knows that every single one of you parents want your kid to play. Yes, we get it. <laughs> right. So keep that in mind. And they, you know, they're human too. You know, if you're upset about something, you're, you know, if you can't, if you're not the kind of parent that can control your emotion and you can't back off for a little bit before you approach one of the coaches, you may not be the right fit. And if your kid, you know, takes after you, like that could be a problem. Yeah. So the example you said is huge. Okay. uh, Well, yeah. Anything else that you want to say? No. I hope you're an asshole. Don't be an asshole. That's it. I'm, hopefully these last couple episodes have given you some insight into 
what that world looks like, how yeah. to navigate it a little bit better. Um, yeah. And I think you said it perfectly at the end there about making sure that it's like just the sanctuary for your kid. That's what it's meant to be. Yep. Just leave it there. Yep. All right.